Welcome to Deep Cuff Channel. Historic day on the front. Ukrainian army flies to victory. Russian army began to flee from the territory of Ukraine. News from the front shows the biggest losses in recent weeks. Ukrainian air force has become more effective than ever at the front. Russian troops shattered. Vladimir Putin gave a critical order to Sergei Shirovakin. Russia is trying to recover. Russian special forces could take action to take on more responsibility. Superior German technology is coming for Russia. An unexpected aid from Oman is on its way. What is the latest status of Bayrak Tarti B-21 manned aerial vehicles? The U.S. military is giving a historic intimidation against Russia. With victories at the front, the Ukrainian army began to land Russian troops on its territory. According to the statement made by the General Staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Russia lost 510 soldiers, one tank, three armored combat vehicles, one artillery system, one helicopter, eight tactical unmanned aerial vehicles, and eight armored tanker vehicles in the last 24 hours. Vast majority of these Russian casualties were the result of attacks by Ukrainian missile and artillery units. Another blow to Russia which could not get over the shock of the attack of the Ukrainian ground troops, came from the Ukrainian Air Forces, head of the military administration of the Luhansk region, Seri Heyday, announced that the warplanes of the Ukrainian Air Force carried out a total of three major airstrikes on Russian-controlled anti-aircraft positions and command centers. In addition to airstrikes, Heyday also announced that engaged ground troops carried out a total of 17 attacks in an organized manner. As a result of these attacks, it is stated that five command centers, two ammunition depots, 11 military units, and four critical Russian military systems under the control of Russian forces were hit. While most of these attacks took place in the eastern region, Military activity in various regions of Ukraine continues from where it left off. It is reported that the troops of the armed forces of Ukraine operate in the northwestern and central part of the Zop or Izhia region. It is stated that the main reason for the military mobility of the Ukrainian troops, especially in the southern region, is a planned attack on the Russian troops. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky and many officials regularly state that the main target of the Ukrainian military is the Crimean Peninsula. After Kherson, a major attack could take place on Zaporizhia to reach the Crimean Peninsula. Meanwhile, the Russian army began to take military measures. Commander of the Joint Forces of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Lieutenant General Siri Neyev, said that the Joint Operation Unit of Russia and Belarus is approaching the border with Ukraine. Neyev emphasized that the heroic defenders of Ukraine are also aware of this situation and have started preparations. While Neyev was making a statement, Russian troops launched missile attacks on many areas in the northern region. According to local sources, Russian missile units tried to target Ukrainian air defense systems with their missile attacks in the Chernihiv region. It should be noted that the vast majority of Russian attacks were destroyed by Western air defense systems. In addition, an interesting situation emerged in these Russian attacks. It is stated that the majority of the missiles used by the Russians in the latest attacks are 55 meters cruise missiles. This information was also confirmed by Mykola Lidanilyuk, the representative of the research department of the General Staff of Ukraine. Ukrainian researchers examining downed Russian missiles came across a shocking fact. Accordingly, these 55 minutes missiles fired at the Ukrainian army lack the explosive feature. In other words, they do not carry warheads. Russia has been trying to implement this strategy for a while. Main objective of the strategy is to distract the Ukrainian air defense systems and deplete their missile stocks. Other reason is Russia's massive missile crisis. We know that such a strategy has been implemented because Russian missile stocks are about to run out. Biggest attacks that Russia can make after these missiles can actually take place with the Air Force. Indeed, MiG-31 fighter jets flying over Belarus and 12 strategic bombers deployed to the Ingalls II base are signs that the Russians have begun to adopt this strategy. 
Western countries also pressed the button to prevent this strategy of Russia. Allegedly, seven more German Gepard anti-aircraft systems could be delivered to the Ukrainian army. We know that the Ukrainian army has now received a total of 30 Gepard self-propelled anti-aircraft systems. However, the problem that may arise here is that besides these systems, their ammunition should be sent to Ukraine. It is known that the German defense industry no longer produces these ammunition. As previously reported, the decommissioned platform has been in storage for the past 10 years, with Germany holding only inadequate stocks of the platform's 35mm ammunition. However, the German government, which made a statement on this issue in the past months, stated that they would help Ukraine with ammunition. It is said that Berlin is in contact with many ammunition manufacturers to supply ammunition to the systems to be used in Ukraine and this problem will be resolved in a short time. Meanwhile, Oman seems to be making an unexpected aid to Ukraine. Allegedly, Oman has started to send US and ASAMS systems to Ukraine. A few hours ago, a Ukrainian and 124 aircraft arrived in Jeshuf, Poland, from Oman. Allegedly, this aircraft delivered the U.S. and ASAMS air defense systems to Poland. Exact number of NASAMS air defense systems sent was not disclosed, but considering that the carrier aircraft was in 124, it can be thought that at least one NASAMS air defense system battery was sent to the region. It has been reported recently that the USA is in negotiations with some countries in the Middle East on the temporary transfer of American NASAMS air defense systems to Ukraine. This period is likely to be prolonged, as the US will produce new systems that it has promised to send to Ukraine. However, with this solution, the USI once again makes you feel that it is with the Ukrainian army. In addition, Estony announced that it has signed a $200 million contract to purchase HIMARS from the U.S. military. This is the largest defense purchase in Estonian history. We are grateful for the help of the USA against the aggression of Russia, especially in Eastern Europe. Meanwhile, some Russian sources make very interesting claims. News about the success of Ukraine's Bayraktar 2 terabytes quickly and suddenly disappeared on social networks and online media. Not only these reports, but also the reports of the Ukrainian Bayraktar 2 terabytes unmanned aerial vehicles shot down have disappeared. For this reason, Russian sources claim that Bayraktar TB2s are no longer flying in Ukraine. It is even said in some social networks that the Ukrainian army has run out of TB2 stocks. However, this is actually not the case. We know that the Ukrainian army uses these systems more effectively, especially in attacks on ports such as Sevastopol. Because these systems are serious power multipliers in providing air superiority against the Russians. Because the Ukrainian army knows this, they use these systems in more special operations. These Russian claims are purely propaganda. Finally, the USA is making a historic move in the Asia-Pacific region. Pentagon sent and deployed the nuclear submarine USS West Virginia off Diego Garcia Island. Island is in the Indian Ocean and the submarine has been in this area for several months. But the Pentagon has announced the news now. We have mentioned that especially recently, Russia and China have increased their military activities in the Asian continent. U.S. military may also have wanted to respond to the situation in the region with this move. However, it is unknown who the warning was directed at. Interlocutors of this strategy are most likely Russia or China. However, the Washington administration may also be warning the Pyongyang and Kim Jong-un regimes. International experts argue that the deployment of the submarine which has traveled such a long way to the island of Diego Garcia, is a demonstration of the power and capabilities of the United States. We will continue to monitor the world, and especially Ukraine. We'll see what happens in the next few days. We have reached the end of another video. You can support us by liking the video. You can easily follow new videos by subscribing. I wish you all a war-free day. See you.